Hi, it's Jason. Super session on the range on Friday. Um, the first question you asked, um, the issue that you raised about fully understanding your ball flight uh, could potentially prove to be the most important question you've ever asked about your golf. Uh, and the info on the session that we had will, will benefit your long-term development greatly uh, as everything we do. Any change you make in your swing going forward needs to be done to enhance the way the club face and the path uh, interact at impact. Otherwise, it's a pointless task. We're just making the swing look prettier. Uh, we're not actually improving your performance as a golfer. So first thing we discussed and clarified was what's going on at impact. Uh, we've got the split screen here with uh, the same information, but just a slightly different way of... of of looking at it, if you will, and comparing the face angle uh, to a different um, different area. So we've got, first of all, we have on the left our face to target uh, comparison. Uh, one of these shots was an overcut. One of these shots was a pull hook or pull draw. Uh, and the same again on the right, only this time on the right we've got a face to path relationship. So the monitor can, the monitor can tell us whichever one of these we like. Uh, I usually have it set on face to target uh, so that I can give you an understanding of how the ball starts off. So you can see a face to target, face is 2.3 degrees to the right, the ball will start to the right. Face is 5.3 to the left, the ball will start to the left. The path on these two swings is very, very similar. 0.7 of a degree is, is just negligible and it's not really worth considering. Uh, so we're going to say that each one has a path of three to the left. So this ball faded too much. Historically, you've been told that to hit a fade, you've got to swing to the left, have the club face open at impact. Uh, unfortunately, this is what most people try and achieve, a face that is open to the target. On the right, we have the face to path relationship. And you can see that when the face is open 2.3 degrees to the target and the path is three degrees to the left, we have a situation now where the face to path relationship is 5.2 degrees to the right. So the face here is, is dramatically open to the path of the golf club. And whenever that happens, so whenever the face is open to the path, the ball will curve to the right. And whenever the face is close to the path, the ball will curve to the left. And that is a general rule of thumb, um, provided we make sense of contact, will serve you very well going into the future. So when we're looking at the start direction of a goal shot, we're considering the face angle relative to the target line. When we're trying to assess the curve on the golf ball, we need to consider the face angle's relationship to the path. So two very different ways of looking at your impact. Um, two things that you need to consider. You can't, uh, you can't discard either one. Uh, it's just a case of understanding the difference between face to target, face to path, etc. So that when you're looking at your golf ball and the flight of the ball, you can start to make the correct adjustments. So once we've gone over that general rule of thumb about face to path, face to target, etc., uh, we started to relate that to the little cut shot that we're trying to develop uh, in practice. Obviously, the drawing of the golf ball for you is very easy, uh, very natural. You understand, or when I say you understand how to produce it, you are able to produce it pretty much shot after shot. It's built in there. Just want to make sure that it doesn't get excessive. Uh, what we're trying to develop here is a shot pattern that allows you to uh, navigate the holes where there's out of bounds up the right and you want to just fit a little cut in there and the confusion came about because you were struggling to get your head around the concept of hitting a fade with a closed club face hence the discussion about face to path face to target etc um, we use the golf machine idea um, stuck the tripod on the mat and said right if this is a machine for hitting a golf ball uh, generally speaking if we aligned these back legs square to where the mat is pointing, we'd get that draw shot every time. That's what you produce. So what we're going to do is on the on the on the fade shots that we want, we're going to point the whole machine down the left hand side of the hole. We're then going to aim the golf club 
in our normal manner that we put a red cane on the map and explain that this club face now is pointing to the left of the target because the whole machine is pointing to the left of the target. If we take this white line and move it back square, parallel alignment if you will, the club face will go with it. In order to then hit the fade, what we need, bearing in mind what we just spoke about, path to face relationship, we need the path to be further left of the target than the face angle. And that's, you know, that can be produced in numerous ways. It can be a grip alteration, it can be a different feel through impact. Uh, I haven't really got a preference, you know, which one you use. You've figured this out yourself through hitting shots in this manner. But you can see now that here we have the target, that's the desired target line. And we have a situation where the face is close to the target, left of target. But because the path is further left of target, the face is open to the path. So both items are pointing left, it's just one's less left than the other. And that's how you hit that little fade shot. Uh, we talked about the gear effect when you're hitting driver and how if you hit the toe end of the club, it's going to add a little bit of left curve. You hit the heel of the club, it's going to produce a little bit more right curve. And we just started to add that detail in and you soon started to get the idea of what was happening when you hit the pull, what was happening when you overcut the golf ball, etc, etc. So, are we hitting a, uh, a fade with a closed club face? Yes, close to target. Based on that, I think you found it a little bit easier once you saw it on the mat in this manner to get your head around exactly what was going on with the fade. One of the concerns um, you then mentioned was the fact that you may give the impression that you're coming across the golf ball uh, over the top if you will and um, what I explained to you was that you're actually making your normal swing what I've done here is I've filmed the swing from two very different angles to give you an understanding of what you're maybe feeling and certainly what your playing partners may be observing because one of the things here that we don't want is someone passing comment that like Jason you look like you're coming across that golf ball and then you start to you start to worry about something that's that's not that important so what I've done here on the left hand image you're aiming down the left to try and hit the little cut and I've took the camera and filmed you from directly down the intended target line and that's what the monitors picking up what's going on down this line and when filming down the line it appears that the club is outside the hands and you're coming across the golf ball what I've done here on the right is I've filmed you directly down the line at which you're aiming or directing your golf swing and you can see there that the, the shot or the club is clearly well inside the hands. So the monitor is only ever going to pick up what's going on relative to our intended target line. As a result, it's going to give you figures that are slightly to the left with the swing direction, slightly to the left with the path, as we were looking at before. When we look at the camera and we line it up with your, um, with your alignment, if you will, then we can see clearly that the club is coming from the inside. We're still satisfying the arc that we talk about during the sessions here. And the way we're hitting this fade is by leaving the club face slightly open to the path of the club. And that in turn gets the ball bending to the right. So two very different looking swings. The outcome of these two shots was pretty much exactly the same. When we looked at it on the monitor, the uh, swing direction was about four degrees to the left path was very similar because we're hitting it with quite a level angle of attack and the club face on both was about two degrees to the left you absolutely button these two with a little fade so you know what players see when observing uh, you and what's actually happening can be very very different those two swings are the same filmed from a different angle which then gives a very different impression of what's going on during the golf swing. 
Great session. Enjoy your newfound understanding and look forward to working with you again in a month or so's time. Well done.